Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and you gotta see this, the XRP Unleashed documentary has hit 800,000 views. So to all the naysayers, oh this isn't important, these people shouldn't be in this documentary, blah 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 blah. Guess what? The free market has a way of showing you things. You might learn something from the free market. Okay, and there, boy have there been some naysayers. I heard, I heard people, oh, these people, they're all trying to label everybody in the document. Oh, they're all this or they're all that. Well, guess what? I got some bad news. I know that, I know that we're all supposed to say that the only people on the planet that matter in, in crypto are builders and developers. Well, guess what? It ain't true. The people, everybody's important. Builders, developers, Twitter sleuths, influencers, people that do research and look for information. Everybody adds to crypto. In fact, you know, it's not just Brad Garlinghouse saying it here. I met Chris G and Carla when I was at Bitcoin Miami one time. And we literally had that conversation. And he this is a guy that used to be at the CFTC, the chairman. He says, I, I literally walked up to the guy and said, you know, We've, we've talked about you on the channel and it's, it hadn't always been good. I, maybe I owe you an apology. Because, you know, adults do that. They apologize face to face with people. That's what kind of what adults do when they, when they might need to do that. Um, and he says to me, he goes, no, no. He goes, he goes you guys are a part of this, this whole movement in this space just as much as anybody. He goes, you, he goes everybody adds different elements to this said it to my face and to Brad Combs face okay so anybody that would be arrogant enough to try to tell you that you're not important that person most likely has some issues themselves and I, I don't like that kind of stuff um, but right here uh, Brad Garlinghouse or John Deaton himself will tell you very clearly that there was a lot of people in the XRP army that were important that have been important to the XRP uh, movement and all this stuff. So, um, actually I bought my 11 year old a kite that we didn't get to fly when I was at the beach this weekend. So I would say to anybody that disagrees to go fly a kite. <laughs> you might find some happiness in your life, you never know. Um, but that's the great thing and the great, here's the other thing, it's important you understand. I've, heard, I've seen these the, the people that have done this documentary, they've been accused, oh, they haven't asked these people or these people. The truth is, these people have asked everyone and they've been open to everyone. I've even sent the names of people. Go, hey, contact this guy. He, he was helped, helped in Ethgate, this Twitter sleuth. You can ask them. I've gone out of my way to help. And guess what? Some people have turned, just to be ugly, have turned these guys down and they've, you know, taking this position that, oh, well, I'm too important and I'm too good and I can't be in a film with those people or those people. Well, like I said, go fly a kite because as you can see here, with I can give you 800,000 reasons that we're on the right side of history. So I suggest that everyone's important and join up. Contact these guys. You, you go to, go to uh, Fruition Films. These are good people. They don't deserve the criticism that they've gotten. They've got, they've put a documentary together. This trailer is at 800,000. The last trailer they did crossed, I think, actually, let's go look. I'll show you. The last trailer they did, did those kind of numbers too. It wasn't just this one. Let's go down and see if I can find it. Where was it? Because I know um, it was the one before this one. Let's see, is it that one? I think it's that one. Yeah, I think it was this one. But I don't think that's the original tweet of it. Where's the original tweet? There it is. 907,000 views. So my suggestion to anybody that's trying to be ugly to these nice, good people, 
that you be a part of the solution instead of trying to be a part of the problem. But if you do want to continue to be a part of the problem, you're welcome to it because you're helping the algorithms. So more power to you. All right. John Deaton seems to support it, by the way. <laughs> Here's John Deaton tweeting about three years ago, I sued the SEC because the incredible harm it was causing regular hardworking people going against the government wasn't about a specific cryptocurrency. It was much larger than that. Da, da, da. And by the way, just as a reminder, um, we'll get to that in a minute. ETHgate was, was never about Ethereum the token itself, and Brad Combs did a really good thread on that. I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. But the point here is John Deaton, I literally work for John. I'm a crypto researcher. I'm an agent of the Deaton Law Firm. I was during ETHgate, and I am now as I sit here. I'm an agent of the law of, of the Deaton Law Firm. Apparently, John Deaton thinks that we're not all a bunch of pieces of crap out here and that, that we have some kind of value add. And Brad Garlinghouse apparently thinks the same thing. And my kids and my wife, they kind of think the same thing. <laughs> I mean, God, these people, I tell you what, I have, ne unfortunately, in, in social media, I have never, ever in my life, and part of the reason is that people are able to hide behind social media. I've never in my life met so many nice people and at the same time so many poisonous people. And it's very unfortunate. And I, I wish it wasn't so, but it, it's, uh, it can be awful. And I, people come to me all the time and I always tell them, look, you can't, unfortunately, you can't go anywhere to any kind of heights without criticism and people lying about you being ugly to you and everything else and that's just the way it is you got to develop a thick skin that's just kind of the way it works i like this black swan capitalist xrp and xlm will still shock the world toilet paper will be soaring off the shelves faster than you can say you know what and no pandemic necessary this time um, then this is hilarious. This is the second or third tweet from some, from major people in crypto that I've seen with a tweet like this. Ethereum is too expensive during peak times. My Solana gets stuck, uh, stuck still on Solana when there's congestion. So now I'm bullish on base. What's your solution? And I, of course, said XRP. It's hilarious watching them scratch their heads trying to figure this out. This clip was going back around. This is Joseph Indoso from Link2. Uh, he's the president of Link2. Um, he used to be the chief operating officer. I think he's the president now. I think that's his title. One of the, he's probably the smartest guy I've met since I got into this space, folks. You would expect large institutions, financial institutions, certainly like Bank of America, to transact. I, I think it was actually quite timely and maybe fully intended uh, that Ripple created and introduced this liquidity hub product. Because what I'd be doing if I were in Ripple shoes today is I'd be integrating liquidity hub into the RippleNet product. So every user of RippleNet, like Bank of America, would simply port into liquidity hub as the means of obtaining and managing that XRP position that they need to work through ODL. Right, liquidity hub is just a massive, um, you know, smart router engine. It has feeds to uh, accounts that Ripple has opened across all the liquidity venues around the world. Basically, virtually every exchange where there is depth of liquidity, it has accounts set. So if I'm Bank of America, I, I become a liquidity hub customer and on any given moment, I would, you know, where I need, you know, pick a number, a billion dollars worth of XRP to transact. I plug that into Liquidity Hub and Liquidity Hub will break that billion dollars up into fractions and route them for execution and closing across all the exchanges to get the optimal average acquisition price for XRP. And then when I'm done using the XRP for ODL, I turn around and I go the opposite direction and I have that same smart engine route my sell order and go back to cash. And that's what I want to do. Sell the XRP across 
all the venues to get the optimal price for Bank of America, right? And at no time do I ever have to be in a position where I'm actually taking XRP from Ripple itself. I'm doing it through all of these exchanges. And what Ripple will be doing in that instance is it'll be on an ongoing basis looking at the XRP available across all those exchanges worldwide and just distributing XRP through those exchanges. It, it, it will sell XRP into those exchanges to create supply. You would. Okay. Then, um, because of the, the Ripple stable coin and all that, this is a good clip that Jungle Inc. had uh, put out um, here in the last uh, day or so. What's today? Some, it's yesterday. You know, it doesn't, Ripple doesn't require you to ever use XRP, even in a trade. I mean, the cool thing here is that anybody in the world now using Ripple can put a bid ask on anything of value from any issuer. So, for example, somebody could decide, you know, I'm going to make a market between United Airlines miles if, you know, once United Airlines miles are on Ripple, I hope they will be able to someday, um, to Brazilian Real. Um, you could go directly. You don't actually have to go through XRP. But what we believe will happen is that most market makers in filling out the world of exchanging value from anything of value, again, currencies, um, merchant reward points, airline miles, gold, silver, anything that you define as value, most people will actually, uh, most market makers will use XRP. Because as a currency without a counterparty, it is a completely unique thing in the protocol, just like Bitcoin is completely unique. Um, so again, our, our view of why math-based currencies are so valuable isn't necessarily that they replace existing currencies, is just that they have a very unique feature in that they have no counterparty. So the whole world, the, the world only has to think about one thing when it comes to Bitcoin or Ripple, is the, the price in any, any microsecond in time. You never have to think about the counterparty risks. It turns out that that is a completely unique thing that's never existed before. So for, why is that important? Um, let's say you, you know, we use the example of, of a farmer in Nepal wanting to buy farming equipment from a supplier in Kenya, let's say. Um, if you didn't have the math-based currency, even in an internet for value, you'd probably have to go Nepalese rupee to Indian rupee, Indian rupee to British pounds, British pounds to Kenyan shilling. That's, that's a lot of hops. Right, and you're going to lose a good amount of money on each hop. You lose value on every hop, right? Because you're, you're involving uh, currencies with counterparties, things of value with counterparty. Um, it'd be much better to go Nepalese rupee to XRP through a market maker, and then there's some other market maker that has made a market between Kenyan shilling and XRP. Now, uh, Nepal and Kenya are one hop away. You're actually one hop away from airline miles, and everything is one hop away. That's why a math-based currency we think is really unique and really has value. You should be about this time going, ah, now I get it. Okay, check this, ooh. I'm gonna show you this, I'm gonna go over this one inside of my group. Um, wanted to show you this bank XRP. I've missed bank XRP. He's one of the OGs of the OGs in the XRP community. He says, just like BTC and BNB have emojis, I would like to see an XRP emoji next to the hashtag. Let's make this viral. Repost this and tweet and tag Elon Musk. Let's make that happen, XRP community. Please retweet if you agree. I think that that's a great idea. I retweeted it. Um, so maybe we can get that going. Wanted to show this. Brad Combs did an excellent tweet this weekend. This is something I said a thousand times while we were uncovering Eastgate. Every once in a while I would do an aside and I would make sure that everybody understood. I'm, we're not, this is not about Ethereum. It's not even about Bitcoin. I don't want either one of those to be harmed. I don't want, I don't even want them to be sued. I, no, we joked around about, wait, wait a minute, because they're calling XRP a security, and many times we would say, wait a minute, you're calling this a security, but this. But we were always very, very clear. Ethereum, it's not about Ethereum itself. It's about the corruption. It's about the regulatory capture. We want to, we, the mission always has been, we want to level playing field. Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, and we'll see which one do, does the best. But there hasn't been the level playing field. That's the reason we had to fight. That's the reason I was fighting. Now, Brad kind of sums this up perfectly here. ETHgate isn't about Maxis fighting over which network is better. ETHgate is about holding our U.S. government agencies accountable because our tax dollars aren't supposed to be used to pick winners and losers in what's supposed to be an open free market. 
I don't believe ETH tokens are securities in and of themselves, but what I, what I understand to be the, the fact is that a public official, Clayton Hinman, and others at the SEC overlooked an ICO fundraise, which was structured as, as a security offered, and held the rest of the crypto space to entirely different standard, allowing a token ass assembly line of billions of dollars worth of project to be launched off that network harming every other project in the crypto space. Side note, if you ever want to know what Clarity can do for a network, just look at the Ethereum chart on the day of the Hinman Free Pass speech. Our tax dollars are supposed to, to be used to oversee the entire capital markets with the same set of rules for everyone, not just the ones centrally backed by JP Morgan and the CCP. The goal has always been a level playing field. Anyone suggesting otherwise has missed the plot. Is missing the yeah has missed the plot. So the title, the thumbnail for this video might be missing the plot because people do miss the plot. And to drive home his tweet, I said you're a million percent over the target. Ethgate isn't over. It isn't over by it's it's not over by a long shot because it's about the corruption, folks. And here's proof. You don't have to take my word for it. Remember Empower? Jason Foster from Empower? Tristan Levitt? I literally met with them face to face in Washington, D.C. a couple of weeks ago. Empower has filed a new lawsuit against the SEC. This is from March 18, 2024. New lawsuit against the SEC because of its refusal to comply with the Freedom of Information Act, hashtag Ethgate. In, uh, and this is over, if you remember, this is over the communications with Bill, between Bill Hinman from May 2017 to December 2020 with any of these people, okay? Not only that, but because of Empower, meanwhile, it became clear there was enough evidence for Empower to make a referral to the SEC Inspector General, which happened in May 2022. Today, we know that our referral resulted in the SEC OIG opening an investigation into this matter, hashtag Ethgate. Now, to those of you that think that people in the XRP community, that, if you're, that everybody that's not a developer or a builder has no value, I can tell you, because I go out and actually talk to people face to face, I spoke to Tristan Levitt to his face. They told, I mean, they literally told us that they came into this whole thing because of what was done by the XRP army, the sluice, the YouTubers, and all of that. So anybody that tells you that the only people in crypto that are important as builders and developers does not know what they're talking about. They need to get out more. And that's the fact, Jack. Now let's go into DAIXRP.com where we're going to talk a little more about this, but we're also going to talk about Tether. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that everybody has something to add in crypto. It's not just this person or just that person. Everyone has some. You've got different life experiences than I do. Start a channel. If you've got something to say, start it. And if you got something good to say, you'll get a big following. Or if you're a builder and you're building a, a project, guess what? If you're doing it right, you'll get a ton of people to your project. If you're doing it wrong, or if you're not doing something that's right, or if you're issuing an illegal security, you could be gone after. So be careful out there. But everybody I encourage everybody, whatever it is that's in your wheelhouse, maybe you're not a coder, maybe you're, maybe you're just a hilarious person, maybe your family thinks that you're the funniest person ever, maybe you can be a, a crypto comedian, I don't know what you can do, but you don't know till you try. So try. And never let anybody tell you what you can and can't do and whether you are or are not important. Everybody, we're all God's creatures. You were, you were made for a reason. Do something with whatever your talent is. Here we go.